snowing again, everybody. Welcome to, I don't know what day we're on. <laughs> day nine, I think, of Vlogmas. Um, I had about one hour of sleep last night because of the steroids I'm on. But I'm walking to Church Street and it's snowing. How nice. You may not see me a lot today, um, simply because there's just a lot to do at my new job. It's exciting though. Um, but new challenges, new, very new, different kinds of challenges I've got to deal with. Things I've never had to deal with before, but I got it, y'all. All right, see you in a little bit. Well, I'm back. It's like two o'clock and I'm heading out for lunch. It has been nonstop. <laughs> Holy moly. I have a lot of work, but it's great. I actually kind of like it. It's a really great challenge. Um, I'm heading to get lunch, kind of heading towards Chinatown a little bit. But I need to get something with some caffeine because I'm starting to feel like I'm crashing a little bit after the lack of sleep last night. And I really hope I get some time to knit. I haven't had time to knit in two days, it feels like. The subways have been too crowded and just haven't felt well enough um, and or too tired. I still have a lot more work to do. And I'm trying to get things turned around pretty quick for folks. Um, yeah, because there's some like significant big deadline HR thing, decisions that we have to make. So, yeah, it's interesting. Anyhow, I'm heading home now. And hopefully the trains are on time. Or just running pretty smoothly because this morning is Crazy commute tonight. So many people on the train. I don't know, something about December and traffic everywhere, including on the subways. Does anybody else notice that? Anyway, almost home, but just so many people. Hey everybody, um, I'm home, I'm in pajamas, so forgive me if I don't show you all of me because forgive I'm not really too. like, <laughs> okay, Gabe. Um, I'm not gonna show you all of me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in my PJs and like comfy cozy, but like real comfy cozy, y'all. Um, anyhow, it's a good, long, very crazy day. I feel like everything is super productive, but it's just like focusing everything. This is a new task for me. Like I'm used to being pulled in like a million different directions. That's not a problem for me. I'm used to that. But because everything's so new and I don't know things the way I need to know them and I'm sick. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little bit challenging. So, and you know, I'm learning new people and new ways of communicating with the people that I'm learning about. Cause I wanna make sure I'm communicating with everybody the way they need to be communicated with. Cause I wanna be that kind of leader. Um, and I also want to make sure I'm messaging in a way where everybody feels included and considered and they feel that things are equitable. At, at least the best of my ability given, um, given, you know, this new situation and the things I'm learning about the organization. I mean, it really is an incredible organization, you guys. And I just, I feel so lucky in so many ways that you know, I went from a really rewarding position into yet another really, really rewarding position where I can make a true difference in people's lives. And that is amazing. And yeah, I will forgive myself and my life for this time, this transition time where I just don't have knitting time. <laughs> don't worry, I will this weekend. Don't worry. And tomorrow's work from home day. Woohoo! So um, yeah, I'm going to do some knitting from home as long as I get plenty of rest tonight. Um, yeah, I think the reason why um, I couldn't sleep last night was the prednisone in particular because the dosing instructions, if you've ever taken steroids, um, the recommendation is it causes insomnia, first of all. 
and like like hot flashes and all sorts of fun stuff like that um it can make you feel like a tornado <laughs> like it actually does a lot of chemical stuff inside your body that um makes it hard to function actually i now understand what my neurodivergent kids sort of feel like to be honest with you because that's kind of how your brain gets it makes you if you're not neurodivergent it can actually make you feel neurodivergent because there's just you can't stop like your brain is just constantly going but anywho the reason why i ended up not sleeping is the instruction specifically said take two pills before breakfast take one pill um after uh, before lunch or with lunch and then take one pill with supper and then take two pills like it was like it was really spread out through the day like it was because I think the first day seven pills six or seven pills I can't remember which but you step down so like each day you take one less but the instruction said that and I was like that's weird because I remember in the past when I've had to take prednisone you took everything at once in the morning but I was like well and the pharmacist specifically said do you know how to do this? And I said, yes. They said, make sure you follow the instructions. So I did. Like a dodo. <laughs> I didn't just follow my gut, which is take them all at once. And when I first Google searched it, it said take them all at once. And I still didn't listen because I thought, oh, well, the pharmacist knows what they're talking about. They haven't probably opened that packaging. And it's not really the pharmacist. Like, you know, it's the person ringing you up at the counter in America. It's like the pharmacist is back behind. So it's like just the person who knows the basics to tell people and what they have to sign off on when they have certain drugs that they get. Crazy pants. Um, don't even get me started about healthcare in America right now because that is like the deep dive I'm having to do and it's time sensitive for the company and I have to make major decisions for the company because they haven't been made yet for the year, which is really challenging. That's the big challenge, but it is time sensitive because the enrollment period ends at the end of December and there's a whole holiday season and it's a process. Um, so I don't even want to get into it right now because it's like it's too much, <laughs> but it's been like a big part of my day and it's going to be a big part of my day tomorrow and Monday and the next day and the next day because it's important and people's healthcare is really important. I wish I lived in Canada <laughs> or so all my friends in Canada, all my friends in England, all my friends in Australia, all the people with nationalized healthcare. God bless you. <laughs> you have, I know you kind of like sort of know what Americans go through, but let me tell you this um, in between the two jobs. Cause you know, I took some time off in between. I had some time off in between um, my, since I wasn't working, the insurance stopped and, but I had the option of continuing it if I paid for this thing called Cobra which is continue, continues your healthcare. Now, during that time, I had uh, a medical procedure with a specialist that needs to happen every so often um, because I have a, a, is it a chronic illness? It's more like a chronic prevention thing because I'm high risk for a certain type of cancer. Um, and I have to make sure that, you know, I get, I get checked. Um, they have to do certain uh, biopsy actually every six months. I'm that high risk. And I have had a procedure before to deal with it. And we think it's cleared, but it can come back. And it's a, the type I have is super virulent. Um, so there is a procedure I can get to take away the risk, but it's a major medical procedure that would require many, many months of, well, six full weeks of recovery. And my life doesn't do that. And for right now, I can manage this because everything's clear. Everything's fine. And I, actually, I'm like, like I keep getting the clean bill of health since the, the operation, but the major biopsy kind of operation, it was a biopsy slash operation. I had to remove some stuff. It was like a larger biopsy. So anyhow, um, that procedure actually costs less to pay out of pocket than it did to pay my Cobra for that month. The medical expenses I've had this month with the televisit and all the prescriptions, even paying out of pocket, cheaper than paying for the insurance. So I was like, I'll do this for two months. That's fine. Can't do it forever because, you know, I have a kid and things could really happen and that would be catastrophic um, for financial reasons. Um, and it really is a problem in America. 
but you're not here for that. You're here for advent calendars. <laughs> so real quick, um, I'll do the night before Christmas one. Gabe, you want to do the night before Christmas? We are on day, what, nine? Is that right? We on, yeah, can you pull it open? It's right up here. Nope, this one. This one. This one right there. What does it say? Oh, it's Santa Claus. With a little old driver, so lively and quick. I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. And then we got Santa. It's Santa on his sleigh. Oh, other thing. There's a really cool event coming up that I'm hoping to take you guys to as long as we feel well enough. Every... Christmas season at a church very close to us. They do a reading of the night before Christmas and it is where the guy that wrote it, um, Mom, Clement, open it. yeah, I'll open it for you. Gabe. Um, it's where the guy that wrote the poem is buried. And so then they do a walk over to his burial site. So I'm hoping we can do that. Cause I think that would be really cool. I don't think it would take long. It's like a Sunday afternoon kind of thing. Is it this weekend? It might be the next weekend. It's like December 13th. I've already looked into it. I didn't know that that happened. I did know he was buried there. So I thought that was really cool. Again, waiting on his Lego advents for later. Um, we're going to go with Firefly Stitches. And then I'll come back with a green lampkin because I have to go get it off of the fridge. But let's start with Firefly Stitches. So we're on day nine. I've been so happy with these advent calendars. They have been a bright moment in my day. Even when I feel like trash. <laughs> and yes, I I am a I'm like a tornado, by the way. I'm on prednisone. Ah, it's like I'm on drugs or something. Oh, I kinda am. But they're legal, at least right now for me. It's a butterfly. Or no, it's a moth. It's actually a moth. And it's like, oh, is it a moth? Or is it it's a fairy with like butterfly wings? I don't know if you can see that, but this picture here. Okay, hold on, let me see. I can't see and do it. Anyway, it's actually really cool. It's a tiny little fairy. That's super cool. Okay, give me two seconds. It will not even be a second for you. I'm just gonna go get that green lampkin yarn because I'm really curious about which tradition we're gonna see next. Can I just say, we're at day nine already. I mean, I know for me it's December 7th <laughs> and the first night of Hanukkah. So if you celebrate, happy first night to you. Um, I'm hoping this weekend to share some Hanukkah related type things. That'll be exciting. What about the gelt? What about the gelt? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we can get some gelt, Gabe. Maybe we can get a dreidel and play dreidel. Day nine. Ooh, a pretty. Oh, wow. All right. So we have a candy called the drumstick. I've never had one of these before. Hmm. Not sure what flavor it is. This is definitely not American candy. And that's cool. Um, and we have this beautiful, it's called a drumstick, Gabe. I don't know, it's from England. And this beautiful color. This is called White Christmas Widely Known. Not tradition as such, but something which many consider to be an integral part of the Christmas season. From decorating our windows with paper snowflakes, singing the popular Bing Crosby song, White Christmas, I certainly hope for the magic of snowfall at Christmas time. Oh, it really does look like snowfall. And today it snowed. That was so cool. All right, everybody. I'm calling it quits for tonight because I got to rest. So I'll see you all next time. Stay tuned. There's some holiday scenes at the end. Bye. Bye.